I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and we're going to jump from talking about my favourite folktale to talking about my favourite creature in Irish folklore. Let me tell you about the Doverku! What is the Doverku? Or, as it's also pronounced, Thawarku, depending on the dialect of Irish you're speaking. Well, imagine a cross between an otter and a dog that's about waist high to your average adult human European male. Now also imagine that it eats people and has an unstoppable lust for vengeance. That's a Doverku. The name comes from an archaic form of Irish and it means waterhound, though they're also known as master otters king otters, or, the stupidest one, the Irish crocodile. So back in 1722, a woman named Gronia Nicunnelly went down to Loch Clannad to wash some laundry. She was gone for an unusually large amount of time, so her husband, Turlock McLaughlin, went down to the lakeshore to look for her. What he found, however, was Gronia's body lying on the ground by the lake, with this large otter dog-like thing lying on top of it, chewing on her because that's just what they do. Turlock, somewhat infuriated and taken aback by this, heads home, grabs his gun, loads it up, comes back, shoots it in the head, killing it right away. End of story. Okay, so obviously that's not really the end. That would be a very short, very, very short story. Once he shoots the Doverku that killed his wife, he starts hearing this whistling, shrieking sound coming from the waters of the lake. The spectators who have gathered at this point tell him, that's the other Doverku and it's coming to kill you. So Turlock and his brother grab a couple of long knives, get up on the back of horses, completely forget that reloading the gun is an option, and ride off west to get away. Two brothers are terrified. They're riding for their lives. They're riding through the countryside, up and down hills, through valleys, and the whole time, the shrieking, whistling wails of the Doverku can be heard pursuing them. But, despite their fear, despite the ferocious sounds of the Doverku, they decide that they're going to make a last stand on Cashelgarin Hill. So, they go into a ruined fort. They tie up their horses side by side in the doorway blocking the entrance, and they wait on the inside of the wall with their knives at the ready. And they're waiting, and they can hear the shrill whistles start to quieten down, get closer, but still quieten down, and then stop. And they're just stopped, listening, waiting. Where has it gone? Why has it stopped making a noise? And suddenly, its head erupts through the side of one of their horses! Like the fucking chest burster in Aliens! Because the Doverku doesn't go under horses or jump over horses. No, it goes straight through the fucking horse. It went through two horses because they were side by side. Unfortunately for the Doverku, it got stuck coming out of the second horse because jumping through a horse isn't that great an idea. And one of the brothers stabs it in the heart. And that was the end of the Doverku. So this story is interesting because Gronia Nikonali definitely existed. Her gravestone is still there. You can still find it and go see it. And it has a carving of a Doverku being stabbed in the chest. The most recent sighting of a Doverku that I can find was in 2003 by the artist Sean Corcoran and his wife on Omi Island in Connemar. These two things switch the Doverku over from mythological folkloric creature to full-blown cryptid. Now, I'm by no means suggesting that the Doverku is real. At, at least I'm not suggesting that there is a previously undiscovered species of animal that could be classified as the Doverku. However, the giant river otter of South America is roughly the same size, it is carnivorous, it is aggressively territorial, they tend to be built around permanent breeding pairs, and they sound like this.
They mostly live in the interior of South America, however there is a small part of the coast of Brazil where they can be found. I think it's possible that, on occasion, whether by stowing aboard a ship or being battered and blown across the ocean, one or two Dovercoos made their way across the Atlantic to Ireland and ended up... I just said one or two Dovercoos. I meant one or two giant river otters which in my head are synonymous with Dovercoos, hence the Freudian slip. I think it's plausible that one or two giant river otters managed to make their way, whether by accident or by, again, stowing away on a ship, managed to make their way over to Ireland and be the origin of Dovercoo stories. The Dovercoo in mythology and folklore has some other powers. It's supposed to be able to command Depending on who you ask, it's able to command all otters or all aquatic and semi-aquatic creatures. So it's Aquaman, but it's also obsessed with vengeance, so it's also Batman. It's, oh shit, it's the fucking Drowned from Dark Knight's Metal, isn't it? It is. Oh, it's even avenging a lost partner, it's absolutely the Drowned from Dark Knight's Metal. That's the Dover Coup. There you go. Rename the Drowned the Dovercu. The Drowned is a fucking stupid name anyway. But yeah. That is my third video in this series on Irish folklore and Irish folktales. I'm going to be doing more of these videos. Obviously, it's a series. That's what series means. I don't know what the next one's going to be yet. I'm thinking maybe Petticoat Loose. But I haven't decided, so I'm going to be putting a poll up on my Patreon. If you would like to vote in that poll, then you will need to be a patron, like Neil McConvera and these other fine people who, to whom I owe my thanks. But if you don't want to be a patron, if you just don't have the money, that's fine, that's cool. You still want to support me? Hit like. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and remember that your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies.